Welcome to the video. This video is going about to be the truth about aero bikes. Now, aero bikes are real. They can change the tubing, they can change the design of the bike, and they can actually make them more aero. But the reality is that the bike needs a rider on it, and you need a rider bike aero combination. And the question is, is when they're in that configuration, are these bikes giving you any real advantage for the average rider. Well, the premise these manufacturers are giving you is you buy an aero bike and you're going to get some advantage. Now, the reality is, is that may not necessarily be true because the bikes are designed to have a rider in a certain position. So if you're riding on the hoods on your bike and you are traveling along, your body is more upright and your body is creating a lot more drag than the advantage that the bike's giving you because these bikes give you very small, usually 15 watts or less. And the new Ariba claims 15 watts. But if you're sitting up and you're on the top of the hood, you're not in the drops, then you're actually creating a lot more drag. So you, you're, 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 what do you call it, cancelling out the benefit that the aero bike's giving you. Now many of us like to ride in the hoods and it gives you maximum ability to adjust the controls and it feels quite comfortable, you have a more upright. And many of us work at desk jobs or aren't that flexible, so we like to ride in the hoods. But as far as aero goes, this is not the best place to be. So if you're buying an aero bike and you ride your bike typically in the hoods here for comfort, then you're not really getting the full benefit of the bike. Now if we go down to the drops, now we're getting our, black, our back more flatter and we're getting a full aero benefit of the bike because the body is about 80 to 85% of the drag when we're riding our bikes. So even though we may have concealed cables, we may have <coughs> a more aero section through here and section tubing, the aero benefit really is nowhere near as us just riding in the drop. So if we can ride in the drops, we're actually getting generally a bigger aero benefit than buying an aero bike. Now even if you wanted to even go better, you can put some aero bars on here which stick out to the front and then you can rest your hands across here like this and this will give you an even better aero benefit than buying an aero bike. So for the price of some tri bars that just fit on your round bars, you can get a much bigger aero benefit than buying an aero bike. Well when we look at a bike like this, you can see that they've attempted or look have attempted to make some of the tubes aero shapes to sell this as a semi-aero bike. But the reality is this is a UCI frame and all UCI frames have to be made with specific dimensions. You can't go outside those dimensions. And the reality is that the UCI limit the manufacturers from making full aero bikes. You know, they could fill in this area here, they could make this a lot longer to get a much aero benefit. They could fill in this bottom bit they could put fairings over the disc brakes, they could put fairings over the brakes, but they're not allowed to because the UCI basically ban it. They say, hey, no, you can't do that. You need, to, you need to make the bikes within the parameters of our rules or you don't get a UCI sticker and you can't use those bikes in US UCI sanctioned events. Now, the other error benefit we can get is the drop. Now, that's the drop from the seat post to the handlebars. And the more you can you can be comfortable and produce the same watts with these two positions, the more aero you can be and the faster you're gonna go. So moving your body generally gives you a much bigger aero benefit than buying an aero bike. Now wheels are something that don't generally come with aero bikes. They may put, it depends, it depends on the model. Usually if they're the Ultegra type position, they give you cheaper wheels. But wheels are really the biggest factor on your bike because they're a spinning member 
and the top of the wheel is doing twice the speed of the bike. So especially at the top of the wheel, if you can get a deeper wheel, you're getting a longer cord for the air to pass over before it's turbulated either by the spokes or by it leaving the back of the wheel and hitting the frame. So you can put aero wheels on just a normal climbing bike which has round tubes and you can still get a lot of benefit. So the bike is approaching the benefit of an aero bike without having those extra tubes which really don't add a lot. And the reason for that is, is because of the UCI. Now if you're a bit like me and you like to ride in all types of conditions including night and rain and everything like that and you want to have a bit of safety, you actually mount your cycle computer here and I've got like a little extra thing here to fit my camera on and I've got a light and you may actually put some other things like a bell. I've got a bell here on my handlebars. So all of these things that you add as accessories on your bike create more drag. So if you're going to mount these things on your bike for safety, then you're actually defeating the whole purpose of what the aero functions that they've made if these are aero handlebars. Some of the bars they make and shape like we, we see the, the Ribble Ultra. It has got special shaping here, which is to cause a weight which your knees then have a much more easier effect to go for the wind. So what you can do is, is what they're saying is the combination of the wake and your knee is going to give you a total aero advantage. But if you bounce something onto your handlebars or put something here or put a light on, we're going to upset all of that benefit that that bikes give you. So if you're going to use a bike for general use, then these aero bikes, once you start putting stuff on them, you're going to compromise the aero functions. And even if you've had integrated cables, this light here is going to put, you produce a lot more drag than any integrated cables. So then you have to ride around without any lights on your front, which is not as safe as having a bright like this flashing because I can tell you right now, this light saved me many times because cars that are going to turn in front of me, they see it flashing, it's very bright and they think twice about pulling out. So when we buy these aero bikes, they're telling us that we're getting some advantage from the bike and the other thing we need to be careful of is how they're actually calculating that. Some of them actually calculate these figures with no rider on the bike in a wind tunnel and generally they quote figures like over a 40 kilometers traveling at 40 kilometers or a higher speed you will save something between a minute and a minute and a half so that's uh that's probably a time frame of well over an hour you're probably between an hour and an hour and a half to save maybe 90 seconds maximum so it's very small and that would be if you're riding in the drops and have got your body in a significantly aero position and you've got your seat to handlebar drop in a, a fairly aero type position. So you need to be a very flexible person to maintain that type of position for many hours. Now, if you're the sort of person that rides in a group ride, then you're not hitting free air, you're in a draft and you get a massive advantage from the draft. And if you're only at the front of that group ride, maybe 10% of the time, this 10% is only the time when the aero bike is giving you any significant advantage. So then if you are riding for the same time between an hour and an hour and a half, and only 10% of that time the aero bike is giving you advantage, the advantage you're giving could be only 20 seconds over that whole group ride, possibly even less. So you're really buying a bike and spending a lot of money and also trying to get yourself in a fairly aero position to get the advantage from that bike. So in conclusion, we have a bike that's aero, yes, and if you put it in a wind tunnel, it's going to show you some less drag, and that's what they're claiming, those watts. But the reality is, for the average rider, who's not always in the drops, and hasn't got a big drop between his seat and his handlebars to get his back as straight as possible, to get as aero as possible because his body is 80 to 85% of the drag, and you're not riding in the drops all day, and you're not riding in clean air because you go on group rides and most of the time you're actually riding behind someone where you're drafting and you're not hitting free air so it's not giving you that advantage anyway, then there isn't a lot of advantage to buying an aero bike because the benefit is giving you, even if it was, how often are you riding at the front of the group ride in free air or how often are you actually riding in the drops? 
or you might be climbing and you've got your hand on the top of your bar. And that bike is giving you no advantages in those situations because your body is now more upright and it's, it's becoming a higher percentage of the drag. It could even go up to 90%. So really guys, if you're going to buy an aero bike, you really need to think twice about how you ride the bike. If you do TTs and you're very, very flexible and you can get yourself into a very aero position, yes, they can give you some advantage. But if you're just a normal rider like I am, and most people are, 95% of people, then aero bikes, I won't call them a scam, but they're really gonna give you very, very little advantage. Well, anyway, guys, that's where I'm gonna leave it and I'll catch you next vid.